Hey everyone, welcome back for another episode. Today, I'm actually beginning the process of uh, vinyl wrapping my plane. Originally, I had planned for the plane to just be one solid color, and maybe someday I'd pinstripe it or do something slightly different. Uh, for any of those uh, folks out there who've ever built an airplane, you know that as you get towards the end of the project, it's kind of like, okay, let's not do this thing or do that thing. Uh, let, let's just get it up in the air and get flying. And then once you're flying, you go back to it and keep working on it. Uh, again, as everyone out there who's built an airplane knows, you kind of never finish. You just keep tweaking and adding and changing things and improving things over the years. So it's that time for me where I've been planning for over a year now to uh, wrap the plane, not the whole plane, but put a design in on the airplane itself. So this is different than my other videos in that it's not gonna happen all in one day, it's not gonna happen all in one shot, it's not gonna happen in an hour. The important thing here is that I have never done this before. Uh, that being said, it's a guessing game. So there's some things that I'm concerned about. Uh, I've been doing like a lot of people do, just watch a lot of YouTube videos and go from there. Um, so I'm hoping that uh, this works out. Now the one thing that you have to understand and I'll apologize for is uh, the lighting in here isn't that great. Uh, I've got some LED lights all over the place. I even got a light uh, down on the plane. So there'll be lots of shadows and stuff. But I'm hoping that uh, what I present here is useful to other folks because there isn't a lot of material out there that I've found uh, on wrapping airplanes. And if this works out, who knows, maybe it's a side hustle. Uh, but for now, it's just for fun. Uh, and hope that the fun it doesn't turn out to be a uh, $1,200 mistake because that's what the vinyl costs. So, let's get to it. <laughs> So originally I had thought of doing this all with uh, Avery Dennison SW900 for no other reason that I had uh, researched saying, hey, what kind of vinyl can I put on an airplane? And it turns out that uh, Avery Dennison had an airplane that was wrapped in their SW, uh, I think it's called Supreme Wrapping 900. So I'd gone through all the online stuff uh, looking at uh, who is doing what, how things work, you know, the, the how things stretch and all that other good stuff. And uh, just before I ordered my material, uh, someone convinced me to go get 3M. Now, I was originally looking at the 3M1080, and uh, since then they've come out with the 2080, which has this extra coating on top. And I guess at some point we'll see that in this video. So I've decided to do that. Now, you can see it kind of behind me here, uh, where uh, I've got two rolls right now on the uh, plane. And those are the colors, uh, if any of you recognize it, they're my logo, uh, that burnt orange and uh, gloss black. So the idea is, is not to cover it, wrap the whole plane, but to, you know, cover quite a bit of it. So like any other good amateur out there, uh, I decided to watch some of the videos, see the materials I needed. So I went out and, you know, did what everybody else does. I went out on Amazon and purchased the things that I believed I need all the time. Uh, I already had a heat gun, but it seemed that I needed some kind of regulating temperature gun. Now understand, I may have mentioned before that I was originally looking at doing a wrap uh, using Avery Dennison. So they talk about post curing with uh, the heat gun all the time. And now that I've switched to 3M, uh, they're not really making a big thing about it. And I'll look at more videos uh, before I actually get to the whole process uh, as to whether I actually have to post cure. But it seems not. Uh, 3M seems to be more of a tackier uh, substance, the 2080, than say the Every Denison, which you can apparently move the vinyl around as much as you want based on what I've seen. So that being said, that the only heating that happens or post curing that would happen is probably only along the edges that you know wrap around uh, certain parts of the plane. Uh, uh, but I did go out and purchase me a fresh new box, uh, which I can't even open. Uh, I, I went and bought myself this uh, heating gun uh, that does have a uh, cool variable uh, temperature thing in the back, uh, although it doesn't tell you what the temperature is. And uh, everyone says, well, if you don't know what temperature it is for post curing, how can you do the right job? So I went out and I got me 
uh, what's called an uh, IR uh, gun, I guess. Uh, is that what it is? Yes, it is. It's an IR thermometer. So to point and see what the temperature is on the vinyl itself. So uh, Avery Dennison was, uh, I think, 195 degrees. I don't know. I'll requote them or I'll mark them up on the screen uh, as to the post curing. So I guess that's what that's for. But I may not need that because it doesn't seem to make as big a difference. And I went out and got the, like everybody else does, the cheapest kit out there. Not true. Uh, but I did need some gloves and uh, I got a whole kit. It's got magnets, but my plane is fiberglass, so that's useless. I uh, got these little squeegee things in it. Uh, which is kind of neat. There's, uh, I guess, a harder one and a softer one, and it's got these little um, things on it here to, I guess, so it doesn't scratch the vinyl. I got a bunch of these cool magnetized little thingies that I guess do some tucking in stuff, uh, and there's a cutter in it and a second cutter in it as well, and you get some a whole bunch of extra vinyl thingies here um, and uh, a, a bunch of blades. So just like for those of you who've painted your airplane, uh, you've got to do a lot of prep, I guess, uh, cleaning uh, of the aircraft before you actually get to starting to wrap. So uh, on this particular plane, uh, for those of us who know that there's, you know, exhaust, dirt under the plane, uh, we've always struggled with, you know, cleaning the right thing and what's the greatest degreaser or what gets rid of, you know, all that garbage that's under the wing. And I've tried many different things. And uh, the one that I found to work really, really well is uh, something called uh, Simple Green. Uh, it's nice. It's easy to use. You pop it on there and clean it off. I am always concerned about whether I'm affecting the paint and I've been using it for a while and it really doesn't, but it cleans up really, really nice. But because it's in concentrated format, it, it's, it's meant to be used straight the, out of the bottle, I guess to degrease some heavy jobs. But uh, because I was concerned about the possibility of damaging the paint, I do a quick once over with it pure and then I've got a uh, about a 60% water 40% solution in another bottle to just do a wipe on after it. So I'll be doing that under the plane although I won't be putting any vinyl under the plane at all the uh, I'll still be cleaning the whole aircraft so I may go with th this diluted uh, s portion right here. The other thing that uh, I've got to do is degrease, and I found this cool thing here, and a lot of uh, guys apparently use uh, dishwashing liquid, and this comes in a cool spray bottle. So I may dilute this, I just wanna see how it works. I'll try it underneath the plane just to see how that works. But the idea is, is that I would degrease the plane, especially around the cowling area where I am right now, uh, I would degrease this this part of the plane, and then once I'm done with that isopropyl la, 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 alcohol, uh, this is a 91%. Uh, fellow at the vinyl store says he takes that and puts maybe 10%, 90% water and 10% of that to give it that final cleanup. All right, so on to the colors. I've decided to go with uh, two different colors, specifically, the uh, orange, or what uh, 3M calls a bird orange, and we're gonna be seeing this throughout the project, and uh, gloss black. So both of these are uh, glossy. This is the 3M 2080 product. It's their newest one. And the difference between this one and say the 1080 product is that the 1080 was just straight gloss and this one here's got this little protective film kind of like a saran wrap over the actual product and what that does apparently is helps you out because when you're squeegeeing the whole uh, artwork what happens is that it'll put lines um, onto the vinyl itself which apparently you have to use a heat gun and heat it out and get it all cleared away if it goes away. So this stops that process, that, that occurrence of accidentally scarring, if you will, lightly, of course, the uh, vinyl. All right, so what are the obvious fears here? Well, I've never done this before. This is the first time I buy vinyl. It's the first time I touch vinyl. It's the first time I think about doing this. 
uh, hands-on. It's the first everything. So I'm actually worried about messing things up. Unfortunately, due to all this uh, CVID stuff, I'm trying to give it a different name, they uh, shut down all the training classes. I was actually thinking of taking a 3M training course on how to do this stuff before I attempted on my own airplane. But I guess uh, live and learn. So as they say, this becomes either a great thing or a mistake which costs me one aviation unit. Not fun. So let's do our best. All right, so before we get started, there are certain things on this plane that I'm concerned about. Uh, for instance, you know, how is uh, the vinyl going to wrap around the wing itself? And let, let, let's take a look, all right? So we're going to walk around. The lighting's going to get really crappy. I may have mentioned this already before. I've only got that one little light back there, and my YouTuber light is uh, back home. So I will point out some of the items that I'm worried about. So the area where I've got cam locks, I'm not overly concerned because I assume the vinyl is going to go into the hole and then I'll put the cam lock straight through it and that'll be the end of it. I am, however, concerned about the area where all the screws are. Uh, I could put wrap directly over this. However, this has got to come out every once in a while and I don't want to have to deal with rewrapping this whole thing. The other thing that uh, I'm unsure of is this area here, like how I'm going to end it and is the cut going to be fine enough to go in this area there. In the front of the plane where I've got the same screws, I've got these little covers on here and these covers kind of go over the vinyl, so that'll be fine. And the same with whatever I may put on the propeller area or the spinner, I should say. The other thing that concerns me is the windscreen. Like, do I put the, the cutting tape right on the edge here and let the vinyl end right there so I don't see any gray at all? Or do I just, you know, bite the bullet and mount it up, say, about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch up on the uh, windscreen? So those are the things that I'm thinking about right now. And another area of concern is more towards the back of the plane. So I was showing my design to the person who does vinyl work for a living. And he was a little concerned about the, the arc over here, this whole area here. I don't think it's that bad. But he was a little concerned that if my, say, my orange, which is supposed to wrap from here and over the top, that this area right here would give me some sort of problem. So I may adjust my design just because I'm slightly concerned as to whether I'm going to have an issue around this top part here. Uh, the vinyl is going to have to wrap around and then come into here at some point because my design kind of takes me into this area here. Uh, I'm trying not to take apart uh, a lot of the pieces of the plane because obviously it's a pain in the butt to put back together again. And I've even done the design on my plane so I have to take the least amount of things off the plane. So right now, the way I've set it up, the only thing I expect to take off the plane is the spinner, if I succeed in wrapping that. But take off the spinner, I take off the upper and lower cowls and possibly just unscrew that front header section on the plane. One of the things that I've also decided to do because I've never done this before is to purposely make my design around the fact that I don't know how to overlay vinyl. I don't know how close I have to put it together. I mean, I've seen videos on it, but I've just never done it. So I kind of designed things with a nice gap in between. So where the black and the orange meet, they won't be next to each other. They'll be minimum one eighth, maximum, I don't know, a, an inch or so. I haven't decided yet what it's gonna look like on the plane. This is great, just spend money, don't plan anything. But uh, no, the design that I created originally has at least a one inch gap between the black and the orange at any given spot. But I'm not sure that, you know, maybe once I put the orange on the plane, I'm going to think about doing something slightly different. So that's to be seen. But I am concerned about that, that how close can I get uh, factor as well. 
And what I hope is the last unknown is this cutting tape. So in reading the information on this, there, 3M puts out two different products, I guess, two different products, probably the same, but one is more flexible than the other. There's the design line cutter and there's the finish line cutter. The finish one is meant for, I guess, straighter lines and the design, you can make all swirly things. Now, I don't have swirly things in my design, but I do have a couple of large arcs that I hope uh, this tape will take care of. Now, I did order the design line, but they sent me the finish line. So uh, because I don't want to wait another four days before I ever start testing this stuff out, I'll just use this and if I find that it doesn't handle the arcs that I'm expecting to do uh, on my project during my test period, then I'll just, you know, go get some other tape. Uh, this stuff is pretty pricey. This cost me $50 Canadian, which is uh, quite a pretty penny, but you get about 164 feet the amount of mistakes I'm expecting to make, uh, that should last me all of 12 minutes. So let's get started and see what we're going to do as tests. So I'm gonna cut some small samples out and I'm going to place them around areas and see how things work. All right, so this is the first time I use the cutter on this vinyl. So this should be interesting. It works. So what was important to me here is that the protective film on top, that saran wrap on top of this 2080 film, someone on a YouTube video said that I should remove it before I cut the vinyl. And the uh, person I bought this from, the company I bought this from here in Calgary told me that it wasn't necessary. And the guy in Calgary was right, it is not necessary. That cutting tool does not affect the protective layer on the top, that is it doesn't peel back, it doesn't bunch up. So either I got lucky or um, that YouTube video was wrong. It is what it is. All right, on to the next thing. Okay, so the next test here is to see what happens with the vinyl and the screws sitting over the vinyl. Am I going to have an issue of any kind? That is, do I let the vinyl tuck into the hole behind the screw or do I have to cut it out and just leave it away from the entire screw? So that's what I'm gonna try next. Next is the cutting tape test. So I applied it around the window because those are the sharpest curves I'm going to have. And I'm gonna lay the vinyl over it and see how it cuts. This will also be important for me as I wanna see whether I'm gonna go past it onto the glass just to leave it there for a bit or whether I'm gonna leave it the way it is now where it's cut exactly to the edge. 